All right, guys, good to be back with you again. So as you recall, we talked a little bit about uh, Diamond Mine Baseball, catcher fatigue, and stuff like that. And there's something I kind of wanted to bring up. It's the first thing that comes to mind. I'm not an expert on uh, catching in the history of baseball. I haven't done a lot of studies on this, but I've done a little bit of reading. And I happen to know that there is a player um, whose uh, catching exploits in a particular season um, are such that Diamond Mine Baseball would do a pretty poor job of uh, recreating them. So let's go take a look here and see. This would be our good old friend, uh, Roger Bresnahan. Now we're not gonna look at Bresnahan's entire career, right? We want to look right here in 1908 where he uh, played in 140 games because there's something interesting that happens in 1908. Now I knew this ahead of time, which is the reason why we're doing this. Look at this streak. This is his batting game log in 1908. We could look at the fielding game log as well. It goes from one all the way down to, oh, it's game 26 where he finally misses a game. So he has 25 games in a row that he starts. He doesn't play all of them uh, as complete games, but he's getting two plate appearances, four plate appearances. Most of these are either complete games or they're close to it, and uh, they're blowouts by the time he leaves. Now, we don't we have games started to zero, like in this game, because we don't know how long he was in for because there is no full play-by-play. -play. It's all right. It's, it's fine. Um, he missed the 26th, and the second... Uh, I'm sorry, he... Uh, played in this game, I guess it's game 27, it says one. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Don't worry about it. He missed one game in between here. And then all of a sudden, on May 25th, he's out, right? So he has one plate appearance, and then he's out and doesn't start again until uh, June 8th. Uh, when he starts again, then the streak continues, right? And so you'll see there are little bits of time where he'll miss a couple of games, but for the most part, we're seeing him play basically every single game, like every game. I mean, every game. You can go look this up if you want. Just go to Baseball Reference, look at Roger Bresnahan, 1908, and look at his batting log, and you'll see that, yeah, so he caught every game from what, uh, we'll say about June 18th, on through September 29th, and then he had a couple of days off, and then starts again October 2nd. You know, and then he has every game to the end of the season. That's a pretty impressive record for a catcher, especially a catcher in 1908. That's pretty impressive. When we go take a look here at his Sabre biography, which is the thing we should do, it says here he caught a career-high 139 games. I'm guessing that one of these is probably a pinch-hitting appearance or something like that. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then uh, the Cardinals were looking at uh, trying to get him, and so New York traded him to the Cardinals, which is incredible. You take this catcher who's caught every game for you, and you trade him away. But the interesting thing uh, comes before that. So he showed up in April uh, in, on opening day in 1907 wearing a huge pair of shin guards modeled after a cricketer's leg pads. Um, they ridiculed him. But then afterwards, eventually, by 1909, he had uh, slimmed that down to a less bulky version of shin pads. That allowed him to catch that long. And he also added leather-bound rolls of padding to the circumference of his wire catcher's mask around 1908 to help absorb the shock of foul tips. I mean, catching back in 1908 was uh, no walk in the park, but this guy was able to do it and was able to play like a supremely high number of games. However, this doesn't tell us a whole lot about which games he played and which games he didn't and exactly what happened. So if you're a replayer, you look at that and you think, well, that's really interesting. But I look at this and I'm like, I want to know what's going on. I want to know how he's able, after missing this time, to play all of these games. Games, and I want to know especially why he missed time there. So I went and did a look. We'll look at this over here. This is New York Sun for May 26, 1908. This is the reason why these old newspapers are so valuable and so helpful and so important because a lot of this stuff doesn't show up in like the sporting news of that time. And um, there are even some newspapers in New York that don't cover this. You need to have a good variety to get this sort of thing. So um, this is uh, all uh, really you talk about needing to be double spaced. This is like half spacing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there's this huge description of um, the uh, scoring in different parts of the game. The second inning, uh, the second was a woeful inning. Moron single uh, Feister popped out, and Bridwell, a double play in hand, fumbled Evers's roller. Sheckard, by grace of the umpire, walked, a row following which ended in McGraw fleeing to the clubhouse. So John McGraw was kicked out of the game again. We'll talk about that a little bit more a different time. John McGraw had a good time getting kicked out. Here, a foul tip dislocated Bresnahan's thumb. Need him going in. So that's what happened. His uh, thumb was dislocated um, in the uh, second inning of this game on May 25th, and that's why he missed two weeks. 
right? We go look at the New York Times as well. I had to look at a number of newspapers to find another reference to this, and it was the New York Times um, that uh, covered this. There was no lack of exciting incidents today in the second game of the series between the Giants and the Cubs, which was won by the latter, the Cubs, by the score of 8-7 to seven in 10 innings, the three principal events not scheduled occurring in the second half of the second inning. The first event of importance was the retirement of catcher Brisnahan from the game due to a foul tip striking his wrist. And then manager McGraws took exception to umpire M. Slee's decisions and suggested to the official that he provide himself with a box of hairpins to hold his wig on, for which piece of witticism he was put out of the grounds amid the jeers of the spectators, and then on and on. But once again, what happened is Bresnahan um, had a foul tip that struck his hand, either dislocated a, a thumb or broke a wrist or did something like that, right? And so that's what happened, and that's what prevented him from catching in every game in 1908. Now, I don't think that it's possible necessarily for a guy to catch in every game, but the reason why I bring this up is because when we use these models and we have these things come up to tell us like what we need to do um, uh, in order to uh, realistically handle um, how players were, were used in real life and so on and so forth, we need to remember the exceptions to the rule. There were guys like Roger Bresnahan out there who could catch in every single game and so when we create games that are supposed to be realistic and supposed to model this, we have to remember that there are some guys who are a little bit more iron-willed than other guys. And for some of these guys, it only lasts for one season. I know that Bresnahan in 1908 is not the only one who's like this, right? There are others around as well. If you know of any others, let me know down below and uh, we can talk about it. Um, but I uh, wanted to sort of bring this up as um, an interesting exception to uh, rules that uh, the makers of games tend to uh, throw together. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.